Hi there! Today's video on Health Chat is on fermented peppers. If you're new to my channel, Clean Food Living, hi and welcome. My channel covers a variety of topics on a clean food life. Now I love creating videos on fermenting foods because fermenting is so good for you and is so healing to the body, especially if you have pre-existing gut, digestive, or immune system issues. So if you want to see more of my fermenting and health chat videos, hit that subscribe button in the bottom right hand corner of your screen, then ding the little bell icon so that you're notified every time I upload a new video. Alright, let's get started and ferment some bell peppers. Now if you're new to fermenting, do not be afraid. I make fermenting so simple, because it is. You don't need any fancy gadgets, you don't need expensive equipment. All you need is a willingness to try and some glass jars. I'm gonna be using multicolored bell peppers, but if you only have one color, that's totally okay. Just go with what you have. I'm using the multicolored because I just think they're so pretty, so it's really just about aesthetics. So what you're gonna do first off is you're going to just cut the tops off. But don't throw away the top, we're going to use them in just a moment. Then what you're going to do is you're going to de-seed your pepper by just gutting them. Just reach in like this and pull out the seeds. You can discard those. Now while I'm cutting up the bell peppers, I just want to share with you some pretty cool information about bell peppers. Did you know that they have three times more vitamin C than an orange in their raw state? And get this. Researchers at Cornell University actually discovered that when bell peppers and other vegetables are fermented, it increases their vitamin C by 12 times. Now think about it. If a bell pepper is already three times more potent in vitamin C than an orange, then multiply that triple value by 12 when you ferment them. That's just like an incredible power punch of vitamin C for your immune system. Now if any of your bell peppers just don't come out perfect like this slice, just more kind of chunky or odd shaped, have no worries. Just set that aside and we're going to use it in our second jar. Then this really tender and soft flesh here, go ahead and just use a paring knife and cut that out. If you've got a little J hook here, go ahead and cut the hook part off and we'll use that in our second batch. So I have my pepper slices all ready to go, and then this is my little bell pepper lid pile, and then the odd shaped ones as well. Now before we're going to pack these peppers into the jar, we're going to make our brine. Now for those of you who are brand new to fermenting, brine is simply a combination of sea salt and water. If you've watched my other videos, then you know I've always pre-made the brine. But in this case, I'm just going to do it a little differently, and you can just see another method. I always use a sea salt when I make brine because sea salt is the most natural, healthiest salt there is. It still has all of its minerals, and in this case, this is a pink Himalayan sea salt that I'm using, but you can use other sea salts as well. Just make sure that they're not bleached and read the ingredients to ensure that they don't have anti-caking agents added to them. You just want a pure sea salt. Now, if you've seen my other videos, then you know I've always pre-made the brine in a separate measuring cup with water, but I want to show you a different method. There's no wrong or right. You can pre-make your brine like I have in my other videos and do it that way. Or you can try this as well. I'm going to take my one half tablespoon of sea salt for this pint jar and I'm just going to pour it right here at the bottom. And for a pint jar you're going to need approximately one cup of water but it may be a little less or a little more. It's okay. We've got the correct amount of salt already in the jar. So I'm just going to pour a little bit into the bottom and give it a little swirl to get that salt beginning to dissolve. Now we're going to just start packing our pepper slices. You want them tight in the jar, but they don't have to be so tight where you're actually bruising and damaging the pepper trying to shove them in there. But you also don't want them loose and falling around either. Okay, I've got mine pretty full, and if you have any leftover slices, no worries, we're going to use them in the second jar. From here, we're just going to pour the water over the peppers. And you're going to pour until they cover the peppers. Now at the moment, these bell peppers are not floating to the top, but through the fermentation process, they're going to soften a bit and therefore loosen. And they hold the danger of floating. And the reason why you don't want them floating is because you don't want them to be exposed to air. So if they float up above the brine, 
that exposed area will make them susceptible to mold and we don't want that. But everything beneath the salt water brine is going to stay safe from any mold growth. You see, God just made things so perfect. The salt water is flourishing to the probiotics, the bacteria that we want. But it's the bad bacteria that cannot survive in the brine water. So that's why it can sit out on your countertop for so many days and not mold because bad bacteria needs oxygen in order to thrive. It cannot survive in salt water. But your probiotics can, and that's what we want. So to ensure that your peppers stay down for the entire duration of the ferment, what I do is I place a cabbage leaf on the top. I like cabbage leaves because they're stiff and they'll actually hold pretty well. You're gonna push it down just like this. Now it's okay if the cabbage leaf gets a little bit of exposure to the air because when the ferment's done, you're gonna to toss the cabbage leaf anyway. It's what's beneath the cabbage leaf that we want to ferment and keep safe from the oxygen exposure. Then to ensure that this cabbage leaf stays down, we're gonna ensure it by adding a fermenting weight. Now this is a glass fermenting weight for large mouth jars that I got on Amazon. They're pretty inexpensive. I'll put a link in the description below if you're interested. And what that's going to do is it's going to hold down the cabbage leaf which is holding down your peppers. Now if you don't have a glass fermenting lid, no worries. You can use a rock. You'll see in my other videos that I do use a fermenting rock and this has been cleansed with soap and water and also boiled and its job in life now is a fermenting weight. So obviously don't pick one out of your driveway and put it straight in the jar. You want to wash it, clean it, sterilize it and then make its job in life your fermenting weight and nothing else. But if you don't have that glass fermenting weight, like I said, fermenting really can be simple. You just put it down on top of your cabbage leaf like this. Now it's time to put the lid on, but as you can see with this pint-sized jar, um, no lid is gonna go on top of this rock. So here's what I do, is I take a coffee filter, and this keeps the debris out. It also allows it to be breathable so that the gases can escape. And then I take the jar ring, and I just place it right on top. Ta-da! Since the glass fermenting weight is above the rim as well, the little coffee filter method works just the same. We're gonna do big chunks for this one. So whatever leftover slices you have, we'll use that. Then here's your odd shape pile here, and then our little bell pepper lid pile. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut off around the bell pepper lid. Toss the stem. And now I've got these nice chunks here. You can do some bigger chunks, you can do smaller chunks, it can be just whatever you want to do. Okay, I've got my chunks here all ready to go. I've got just a variety of different sizes. Now we're gonna do the same thing as we did for the pint. We're gonna add our salt to the bottom of the jar. Now because we're doing a quart size, we're gonna need a little more salt. So if you're doing a quart, you're gonna add one tablespoon of sea salt to the bottom of the jar. Then just like before, we're gonna add a little bit of water. Kind of swirl it around there. And now let's start adding our peppers. There's no really wrong or right way to do this. You just want to put them in. You want to just gently pack them. And in this case, we've got a little bit of space at the top for our cabbage leaf and for our fermenting rock. Now you're going to add your water and we're just going to fill it up here. And just a little reminder, be sure to use pure clean water. Don't use city tap water because it has chlorine and other chemicals in there that could interfere with the fermenting process. So if you are on city water, I highly recommend go to the store and buy yourself some spring water. Keep adding your water until it completely covers the top of your peppers. And as you can see, they're already starting to float up a little bit. See that? But have no worries, that's what our cabbage leaf and fermenting weight are for. Then same as before, I'm just going to put a coffee filter on top and then hold it down with the jar ring. Now that our pepper jars are ready to ferment, what we're going to do is we're just going to leave it on our countertop at room temperature for five to seven days. And I recommend setting them in maybe a glass 
baking dish because if they overflow a little bit during the fermenting process, it's not getting onto your counter. It gets caught in the nice glass base. Now stick around because I'm going to show you the end result for these peppers. All right, let us take a look here. It's been five days and I think these peppers are done. There is a lot of brine left over with this one. And you know what? You do not have to throw it out. What you can do is just save it in a little glass dish, cover it with plastic wrap or a tight lid, and you can use it as a starter in your next ferment. The peppers did kind of sink down a bit. I gotta use this knife to go fishing for the fermenting weight. Now I'm just gonna pull the cabbage leaf out. But you know you can eat this cabbage leaf. It was completely submerged during the fermenting process, so it is still perfectly good to eat and just ferment it along with the peppers. Using a clean fork, here are the peppers. Let's take a look at these peppers. Absolutely perfect. To store your peppers, you can discard the coffee filter, then just place a regular lid on the top, put it in the fridge, and it's good there for weeks to months. If you want to check out my other videos on fermenting, you can do so right here. They as well are friendly to beginners. Hit that subscribe button, then ding the bell to be notified each time I upload a new video. I'll see you next time. Bye!